Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Taste and See on SSC Live TV. I'm Ken Jobst, and this is my lovely bride. Elisa Lee Jobst. We're just so delighted to be here with you as we're, we're continuing to kick off season two. Season two of Taste and See. And, and last week, what we did last week, I, I was, I'm still buzzing with the caffeine from the taste test of all the coffee. But, <laughs> but last week we talked about taste, that your tongue has taste receptors. And the tastes are? Sweet. Salt, sweet, salty. Sour. Sour, bitter. bitter. And umami. And umami. Now, uh, and, and once again, umami is that um, savory taste, like, like, like mushrooms and beefsteak and that sort of thing. It's kind of hard to describe. Musky-ish. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's triggered by a particular amino acid. Anyway, we were talking about the fact that your tongue only has these five different types of taste receptors. So then how is it that we can experience so many different flavors? And, and here's, here's what I was thinking, right? The piano has 88 different keys, only 88 keys, right? However, you can make an infinite amount of music from those 88 keys by different combinations, by different timing, uh, and the, the whole thing comes together. So you can have a beautiful song just with those 88 keys. Now, the thing that we're talking about today is not simply taste. Today, we're going to talk about flavor. And, and so rather than confining this to just sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami, umami, we're going to be talking about how we process a whole bunch of flavors. And, and, and this, I, I'm just really excited about this. And the scripture verse that we want to use as our springboard for this, uh, this discussion is once again coming from Psalm number 139, verse 14. And, and uh, go ahead, Elisa, just, just quote this scripture for us. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My soul knows this. My, my, this is a soul food thing. There's flavors <laughs> here, right? And I'm praising God for the flavors. Now, now watch. Think about this. Every evening, the sun goes down, right? And the, every evening, there's a different sunset, right? Same sun, same horizon. You stand there, right? But, but the sunset is beautiful in, in so many different ways. God could have made the world with a light switch. And at, at six o'clock in the evening, God could just go blink and everything be dark. You know, daylight, dark, boom. But no, what God does is gives us beauty in the sunset. And God's doing the very same thing with the combination of flavors that we get to experience. You know what? Yes, you do. Don't you? <laughs> Most days. Well, why isn't there just people chow? You know, that, that, that we go, we buy dog food. It's the same flavor. The dog still eats it every day, day in and day out. But that's why they beg, because they know we have stuff better. So, so the, the deal is we are, are fearfully and wonderfully made because we can experience a whole variety of flavors. Uh, 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 what? a symphony of flavors can go on in our own mouths. And, and you know what? We talked about this a little bit last time, but um, you know what? Let's, let's invite, we did some taste tests last time and we don't want you to be left out. So today, sometime, what we want you to do is to go find some jelly beans, right? Jelly Belly Jelly Beans, Jelly Beans from wherever, Jelly Beans left over from two Easter's ago, <laughs> right? Ew. Okay, now, close your eyes and don't look at what color that jelly bean is, right? And put it in your mouth, but hold your breath while you're doing it. 
I know it sounds complicated. I got my eyes closed. I'm going to hold my breath while I put the jelly bean in my mouth. Without... Hold your nose too, because if you don't hold your nose, you'll be able to taste it too. Now, so you chew up the jelly bean while you're holding your breath and holding your nose. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot, but trust me, watch. You, you won't you, taste it. You will not taste the flavor. You'll only understand your sweet receptors on your tongue will fire. And, and so you'll know, wait a minute, I'm eating something so sweet but you won't know what kind of sweet. Yeah. You know, uh, we've got these little jelly belly, uh, jelly beans in pear flavor, buttered popcorn flavor. What What else? My favorite Cherry, are all the red ones. All the red ones, right? right? So <laughs> Cinnamon. You, you will know that they're sweet, but you won't be able to perceive a flavor in, unless you're smelling. Now, that introduces us to the complementary sense to the sense of taste, which is flavor. The olfactory. <laughs> Did I ruin it for you? No, no, no. <laughs> because you, you take your sense of taste, you just got ahead of me. You got ahead of me just, just this much. You take your sense of taste and your sense of smell, results in, say it, flavor. Your, your sense of flavor, your experience of flavor. <laughs> so, and, and now, now we're getting like deep into the experience of eating, right? Taste and see that the Lord is good. We need to get down into the phenomenon. What does it feel like to enjoy these flavors? And there's a, there's a whole science out there that's around the way we eat. You know, you, you've, you, you've heard it said, you are what you eat. Mm-hmm. You are also how you eat. And, and watch this. Human beings are the only animals that cook some of their food. Have you ever noticed that? Pretty I've much. I've had goldfish. Yeah. I've had goldfish. Goldfish don't cook any food. We've got a dog. Don't trust him in the kitchen. He won't cook. He doesn't cook. And He'll clean up. Cats are the same way. So, so we're, we are the only animals that actually cook at least some of our food. Now, it, why is that? Well, there are many, many benefits to it. But some of the benefits are that we, you know, we're, we're able to uh, get the calories that we need to grow, so on and so forth. But all of this notion of flavor and food has given rise to an industry called food science. And in the food science industry, there's a division of food science that is all about the experience of eating. And it's some of the most fascinating reading you can do. And, and I, I, okay, there's more fascinating reading. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, Sorry. It's reasonably interesting. <laughs> I just stepped it back. It's reasonably interesting <laughs> reading. Now, now. Food scientists understand that there's some certain things about the experience of eating that we really, really like. And one of the things about the experience of eating that we really like is called mouth feel. Mouth feel. So many different aspects of mouth feel. It's insane. Now, now watch this, watch this. My friends, the food scientists, have developed some things that may or may not naturally occur in nature, right? <laughs> Never funions in nature. <laughs> now, now fun, funions, I, uh, I got love for funions. Funions are great. They're, mm. they're an interesting thing. But, but watch, they are, they're prepared in a very, very interesting fashion. Um, they're made to look like onions. Onion rings. Yeah, right. And now at home, if you've got an onion ring, you open it up, there's an onion inside, mm. right? The food scientists know us, and they know that the best part of the onion ring is the crunchy Crunch. outer fried part. Mm -hmm. So um, they made Funyuns to be crunchy. And I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I'm too embarrassed to crunch these real loud on network television. You want one? I don't mind crunching it out. Okay, we're, go, we're both going to do it so you can't tell which one of us is actually crunching. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Onion-y. Did you see what happened? Okay. It disintegrated. Okay. It, it's gone. It's gone. It's completely gone. It's a puff. 
because the people at the Funyuns factory、mm. understand that that we are in it for the crunch. Now, it, sincerely, and the, the fracturing of the the Funyun is the most fun thing about them, right? <laughs> So, so basically, they fracture in your mouth very, very easily, and the mouth feel is it disperses the onion powder flavor, flavor.、Mm-hmm. throughout your mouth all at once. So it's not like you have to work to get the flavor around. The flavor immediately is delivered to every taste receptor in your mouth at the same time. So it's it's like I got to tell you. It's like a little onion bomb going off in your mouth, and the the flavor rush is amazing. Now, that's not accidental. They actually did that as the result of a whole lot of research. You want to do this one more time? Sure. Okay, we're going to do this one more time. You have a little bit. I'll have a little bit. There we go. I'm taking two little bits. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, so much crunchy. Okay, love the crunchy. Now.、Mm. Some people refuse to do this to a good funyun, but if you take a funyun and put a damp paper towel on it and put it in the microwave for just a little bit to sogify, <laughs> that's when, not that's an official word now. He just made that up. To sogify your funyuns, you will find that they don't deliver the same. What's the word? Mouth feel.、Mm-hmm. And so, if they were not crispy, they wouldn't distribute the onion flavor throughout your mouth at the same time to give you that onion rush. So, food science, food science is all about、uh, d- delivering a flavor experience, right? Tell us a little bit more about some of these mouth feel dimensions. Oh my goodness, there are so many mouth feels. That's the mechanical part of eating. Mouth feel is the definition is the mechanical part of eating. So you, there are qualities,、uh, so many cohesiveness, the degree to which the sample deforms. So like the funyun breaks up and deforms before rupturing when biting with the molars, which is the back teeth. And, and that's just like, like what the funyun did. And like gum, like what, gum. What, what kind of gum was it? Uh, hubba bubba. Hubba bubba. <laughs> right. When you when you bite into hubba bubba bubble gum,、mm-hmm. right? There's that little sensation that there there's tiny little, little grains. Grain that it's grainy.、Mm-hmm. By the way, there's there's other other types of gum have those little flavor crystals.、Mm-hmm. The flavor crystal thing of of delivering the little candy sweetness thing. That's only half of it. The part of the joy of it is you're biting down on it to crunchify. So, and get so we, the flavor,、yeah. and then the chewing you get forever. What, not with as much flavor, but so so graininess is part of it.、Uh, you know, just the, the the sheer weight of the thing in your mouth. Density. So so how dense is it? Is it rough?、Mm-hmm. You know, is, is it, it smooth? Is it dry? Is it gushy?、Uh, all of those things. Did you know that nearly 75% of high school seniors are accepted to their first college of choice, but only a little over half can afford to attend, according to a recent study. The outcomes prove the need for college-bound students to consider tuition costs alongside of program offerings. Simmons College of Kentucky offers five degree concentrations, and in 2018 was named the most affordable HBCU in the nation. Simmons College of Kentucky, creating the next generation of thinkers. Right.、Mm-hmm. So, so you're going to preserve the food by pickling it. Now, I've had some of the best pickled stuff ever in the history of food.、Uh, pickled cucumbers. Right? Which are just usually regular pickles. So all of that has to do with mouth feel. But the the two two very important dimensions of mouth feel include you know crunch is one of the most important. But across the the food horizon, smoothness is another one that's remarkably important. And, and I, we want to we want to explore. Mouth feel and smoothness as we taste and see today、uh, 
some of our samples. You know, Elisa and I were on the bus. We were on the tarp coming over a little earlier, and I'm, I'm sitting on the tarp, you know, with, with this uh, styrofoam thing on, on the tarp. And everybody moved away from us on the tarp because I don't know if they thought there was a human head in here or something, <laughs> but, but this is our cooler. And, oh, look in here. It's the good stuff. The, the ice cream lady <laughs> came by and stocked us up with mint chocolate chip, chocolate paradise, Ooh. pineapple and coconut. Mm, have to taste and it. I'll let you work on that one. Oh my, Netflix and chilled. Okay, better description, peanut butter ice cream with sweet and salty pretzel swirls and fudge brownies. This one is mine. Wait, 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 wait. now watch, watch. Read that whole thing again. <laughs> now, now, now watch, this is like chocolate, mm. right? This is mint chocolate chip, but, but read the title of this. Ben and Jerry's. Peanut butter ice cream with sweet and salty pretzel swirls and fudge brownies. This one okay, right now, now, how many taste buds are they trying to, to win over? Peanut butter. Okay, so, so there, there's peanut butter. So and they're, they got the umami. The and b depending on the texture, you're gonna have the crunchy and we're gonna have- Salty? Mm-hmm, and sweet. And sweet. With sweet and salty pretzel, so salty and sweet and the crunch crunch and fudge brownies, which is sweet and- There is so much going on in this little pint thing while Elisa's opening that up, First. I'm gonna reach over here. And I, I've gotta tell you what, this, this, I'm gonna get my COVID gloves on. All right. This, you know, I didn't have serious... gloves on. Does that mean I get to eat this whole pint? You, you get that one. <laughs> you, you get that. Oh my goodness, watch. Look at that. Watch, now, no. as, as well you can see, while I struggle to, uh, to come over here to be able to, you, all right, now, seriously, seriously. Now this this is the the very top of this thing, and you, you, tell you what you can have all those three. I'll, I'll go <laughs> brought my scoop, got the scooper. All right, all right. Here we go. I want you to see what's going on here as I scoop this out. There's a giant hunk of chocolate. That's not a hunk of chocolate. It's a brownie. A, a hunk of brownie. It's not even a brownie. It's a pretzel. Oh, that one's a pretzel. Re remember, remember what we said about salt and sweet and everything so so all of that is like right in there okay do you want um do you want a sample of that one sure is that do all i'm gonna get to... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay now now ben and jerry you ben and jerry started this company in vermont many many years ago probably about 30 years ago they started the company in vermont after having attended an ice cream making workshop that was offered by the University of Vermont. And so they went to this two day workshop and then they decided we're going to go into the ice cream business. Go ahead, please. I was gonna say, are you gonna talk? Uh, <laughs> while I'm talking, she's going to sample. They went mm. into the ice cream business and, and mm. very interestingly, they make wow. a point of keeping big chunks in the product. Look at that. So, once again, I'm, I'm looking at this thing and it's, uh, if you take a tour of the factory, which you can do, even though they sold out to Unilever years ago, you, you take a tour of the factory and you'll, you'll see that every so often they take off one of the pints from the assembly line, melt all the ice cream out to run it through the chunkometer. And <laughs> it has to have so many chunks in it or the batch is no good. So here I am, I'm struggling to get part of the brownie and part of the pretzel at the same time. I didn't get pretzel. Oh, okay. Sad, huh? Well, I'm gonna have to have another sorry, scoop. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> but, but okay, it's peanut butter ice cream. So before I even taste it, there's the peanut butter aroma. I've been engaged already to the product just simply by taking the lid off. There is no better smell in the entire world than a freshly opened jar of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you. Okay, ready? Cheers. Oh yeah. 
It's so good. I oh, didn't get any no. pretzels, so <clears throat> the mouthfeel, you got the cold, the sweet ice cream, and then you have the chunk from the brownie that's chocolate. I didn't get any of the crunch from this pretzel, did you? No. But that's gonna be another mouthfeel you, when you get the pretzel crunch part. Because the pretzel is something to look forward to if you didn't get it yet. Because you can right? dig through the whole thing. Now there is a subtle graininess mm -hmm. to the peanut butter. So that you, it, it's not pulverized peanuts, right? That you, you still get the experience of a little bit of uh, graininess, a little graininess. Usually graininess is something you want to avoid in ice cream. You don't want grainy ice cream. You, a little bit of graininess is going to go with the Italian ices and it's certainly going to go in some uh, sherbet type. Smooth things. Smooth they things. They gotta have something going. Uh, the quintessentially frozen ice cream treats. It, it, it's a trade term, okay? All right, that's pretty good. I like yes. that a lot. Now, putting the lid right back on that because <laughs> that one's coming home with us. Mm -hmm. Now, to cleanse the palate so oh. we are not interfering with one flavor and the next because peanut butter is an overwhelming flavor. We have some of these fancy little butter cookies and some oyster crackers. I'm opting for the oyster cracker. I'm going for the cookie. Now also, very interestingly, nutritional information is included on each of these. Don't look at that one. Ouch! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> If you sit down to eat this whole thing, it's 1,180 calories. That's the only thing you should have for the whole day then. That's the only thing you should eat all day long, right? It makes me sad. Now we got haagen -Dazs. You know where haagen originated? It's German? Mm-mm. Say, well, the name is. haagen Mm. haagen with an umlaut? Mm-hmm. Yeah. haagen that sounds like it could be... Swedish. Swedish, yeah. <laughs> Or, or uh, from uh, Flemish or something. Norway. It comes from New Jersey. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a name that was designed to make it sound exotic, mm. but it comes from New Jersey. I love New Jersey, all right? Okay. I learned to speak English there. She learned to speak English in New Jersey. It took me a long time to lose that accent. Now, okay, here we have the haagen and the haagen oh, 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 wait. haagen pineapple, pineapple coconut. coconut. So we're talking about a very, very different type of flavor profile. Let's see what happens when we dig right in, digging right in. Oh, look at that. I'll share. Oh, mine came out big. Now, would you like some as well? Can I just have some of your bowl? Okay. Fine, <laughs> fine. put it in a separate bowl. Okay, there we go. Still trying with the uh, Pampered Chef ice cream. It's a baller. <laughs> it's got- It's a melon. The, it's a melon baller. Okay. Okay. Now we're good. Dig so it. now we're going to try this particular. Th this, is, this, this is pineapple coconut. So the idea is you're getting like a little pina colada, but it's not a it's not a sherbet. It doesn't it's, have a smell either. It's an it's an ice cream, and so no smell. No, very very faint smell of outdoors. Oh, hmm. They have the texture of coconut. Wow. There is a coconutty texture to it. Very sweet. But you know what else? Chunks of pineapple. Yum. That's much better than I thought it would be. The coconut, watch this. Mm. Weren't they clever? Weren't they smart? Everybody else is putting pineapple and coconut in a, uh, a, a sherbet or a sorbet, mm. right? They're putting it in coconut milk oh. to make it creamy so it disperses throughout your mouth much quicker mm -hmm. than it would as an ice or as a sorbet. Oh, they know what they're doing. These people are very clever in New Jersey, mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you. Yeah. Okay, that. And part of the mouthfeel too is slipperiness or smoothness and uniformity. And, and this is this is pretty uniform because look, there's not big chunks in it. Right, and the ones that you do get are small, but you can taste the coconut pieces and the pineapple pieces. Okay, that's... Awesome. 
For the non-chunk ice cream, that is truly a, uh, that's a very nice thing. But now on to my childhood favorite. Hmm. My childhood favorite through the years has always been. Oh, Cleansing mint, the palate. Mint chocolate chip. And we're going to cleanse the palate with an, an oyster cracker as we continue. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mint chocolate chip. Crochet brand. That was one of my first favorites, too. <laughs> we're just meant to be together. <laughs> so so we open we open the mint chocolate chip, and what do we immediately see? That it's a color of green that may or may not occur in nature. Light shade. It's a very light shade of green, and I'm, I'm just going to go right ahead here. And oh, okay. Is that mine or yours? That's mine. Okay. And once again. You can share with me. Okay. Oh, okay. It's now, the mintiness has enveloped the room. Mm -hmm. Right? You can smell the mint before you even start tasting. So the, the, the mint is in the air. And, and it, it has the chocolate chips. So you can see the chocolate chips, but, but like, you know, a little tiny, oh, let me tell the story of a friend of mine who used to work at a confectionery shop. Mm -hmm. And at this confectionery shop, they had wow. a five gallon bucket. I mean, it's a big candy factory a five gallon bucket of peppermint oil. Whoa. And as a prank, the old guys told him as the new guy to come in and open up the five gallon bucket of peppermint oil. Ooh. So he took the lid off the peppermint oil and the peppermint aroma smacked him. I bet and it knocked him over. Literally took his breath away. He could not breathe. That's and then everybody else is like laughing. But somehow or another, just a, a a couple of drops of peppermint oil must be in mm -hmm. the, the, the mint chocolate chip. It's perfect. If you decide to make ice cream at home in an ice cream freezer, you can do a very good job and you can come out with something that is very, very close to what we have right here by simply using a little bit of peppermint oil. Tiny bit. Don't worry about the green food coloring and then just chop up a bunch of chunks of, of dark chocolate, mm -hmm. put that in and you're good to go. And you, you'll have something that is at the, Very you know, similar. The neighbors will be coming over. If they knew. If only they knew. Yeah, but they can't smell it cooking, so bonus. Now, finally, chocolate paradise. Hmm. Chocolate paradise is the, the last of our ice creams that we're going to be testing today. And you know what comes from our friends at Kroger once again? This is pretty much chocolate ice cream. It, it and I, I, I don't want to say just chocolate because it's chocolate in its own right. It's a little bit soft, but that's okay. We're, you know, talking. We're talking. We're doing fine. We would rather have it just like that. So, here goes. Hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. Hmm. It has little pieces of chocolate too. Ooh, it does. Tiny little pieces. <coughs> yes, it does. It's good. Very chocolatey. It's a simple, it's the most simple one. It's a very straightforward flavor. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Now. That one didn't, it wasn't as heavy as I thought it was going to be. It's very light. Uh, not exactly whipped, but that's another. It does. It does exactly. Mm -hmm. Now I'm. I'm going to. Uh, how do I say this? My lovely bride has been taken with what's called Halo Top, which, which is a frozen dessert that basically is just ice cream that has been whipped up with a lot of air. Because it doesn't have any calories, right? Because it's all air. It's it's about half the calories because it's like half air. So you can eat it and half all ice cream. of it. <laughs> so you can sit down and eat the entire pint, and the pint is only like 400 calories for the pint. Remember, this little guy right here is almost 1,200 calories. That's almost <laughs> as much as you should have an entire day. This should be the only thing you eat. 
but the halo top, you're, you're getting away for like 350 or 400 calories. The, the deal is half of it is air. Yes. Now I want to say this from, from the depth of my heart, <clears throat> air is one of the most important ingredients in food mm -hmm. because air makes bread Right. Bread. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, air is something that's important. There, there's a lot of air in this ice cream. In this one, especially. A and that this is, is demonstrating. Now, the purpose of the air is to help distribute the, the, flavor. the flavor through your mouth. So all of these have different dimensions of mouth feel. Heaviness. And, yeah. and, and right. The, like some are a little heavier. Some are a little lighter. Some have chunks. Some have no chunks. Some have a different way of, of enticing you, the aroma of the peanut butter, the aroma of the, uh, the mint. So there's a whole lot going on when we're talking about flavors. And these are things that we're going to explore the rest of this season on Taste and See. And we'd like to encourage you once again that, you know what, if you would like for us to do a taste test, go ahead and, and let us know. Just, just, you know, put it in the comments section let us know and we'll do a semi-scientific taste test <laughs> of them. Any other thoughts? Anything else that we've got here? Um, we did, did we do cooling, like cooling textures like the peppermint was and, peppermint, and yep. like a heating hotness thing, like a cinnamon, cinnamon jots or a cinnamon. We didn't do a cinnamon ice cream, but that would be an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. I do kind of like cinnamon ice cream. It would be very like hot. Now. As you have seen at home, you've seen all these different ice creams. We're, we're the ones teaching them. But you know what? My, my old friend, the Roman gourmet Marcus Gravius Apicatus, said this, right? You know what he said? Tell me. Yeah, I know what he said. The Marcus, first taste is always with the eyes. The first taste of any dish is always with the eyes, <laughs> right? So, so that's why plating is so important. And that's why in the restaurants, they make such a big deal of plating. If you really want to know what something tastes like, blindfold yourself when you go to the restaurant. And, and, and then you'll, you'll be like, oh, okay. It's not the ambiance. It's not the plating. This is what the food is doing for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we look forward. Maybe one of these days we'll do a blind taste test to, to see how that all works and out. also if you don't like it like i just don't care for certain foods you can hold your breath and not taste the food and, 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 and chew and swallow and still way, not taste the food i i do have to give credit to my <laughs> lovely bride for inspiring this particular episode because uh, another word for mouthfeel is texture mm -hmm. and there are certain textures that some people won't even, you know, it's like, cannot no, eat. it just cannot. can't do a particular texture. It's not the flavor. Nope. It's the texture. Mm -hmm. and, and so for those texture sensitive folk who are kin to my lovely wife, <laughs> we, we say, God bless you. And you know what? Come back around, let other folk know about Taste and See, and we're going to have another episode coming up next week. So until then... This is Elisa and Dr. Ken Jones. <laughs> We're delighted to be here. Tell other people about Taste and See on SSC Live TV. It's television our way. God bless. Till next time. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.